everyone has obstacles in their life. There's always a distraction. There's always a vice. There's always something weighing us down. Um, and sometimes I think it's hard for people to relate or truly understand what you're going through and why you make certain decisions. For me, it's been an exhausting, huge decade of my life, it, it, probably even before that. But for so long, I've been truly beaten down, really, by the weight of expectation and my own desire. So I talk about family court a lot. I don't want to keep talking about it. It actually bores me and drives me nuts, to be honest. I have to keep recycling it. It's been a period of my life I want to let go, but I still live in the mire of the... the um, the result of it all really it's just it's been prolonged suffering is the way i think of it and it's just you want to break free you want to free yourself but it's a freaking nightmare and so when it comes to our children out on the external people have expectations of course you know you should do this should do that should do this should do that yeah but i don't i don't particularly like being a puppet and i get really fed up but they say it goes way beyond that unless you're in a situation i don't think someone would truly understand how you could possibly feel you know, it might be relatable, but I don't think they truly understand. And that is when I, I have to do all the travel for my daughter, for instance, and it's really hard. It's not, it's not just down the road. This is heavy travel. And the roads are just getting more and more traffic. It's just getting unbearable. It's getting stressful as shit. That's what the travels are actually getting stressful. And it becomes more to the fact that sometimes you settle into a lifestyle, even if you're not that happy, you, you sort of, you find a way to cope. You exist, you know. And that's literally what it becomes for me. I use my time wisely. I go through periods where I'm incredibly productive. Then I give myself a time where I'm like a little bit more free and just trying to chill out. And then I feel pressure on myself because I don't feel I'm doing enough. So I've got this continual burning desire to always be my, at my best. And that grinds me to a halt sometimes. It's a lot of weight on my shoulders. Entirely unreasonable, but that's how I live. So I literally, I sometimes pass out. I passed out about an hour ago on the bed. I just, not even properly across the, like the wrong way across the bed, you know, sideways. Um, just to, I just wanted to lay down just for a moment, clear my head, and I was like passed out. Because I don't even realise how exhausted I am sometimes, you know. But like I said, I find ways to cope. And the separation from my daughter, it truly destroys me. Sometimes I cope better than others. Other times it can derail me for weeks. You know, sometimes it's just days, but most of the times it's weeks. And it's like I only really, depending on the, how heavy it was, you know, to transition, sometimes it's as I'm just getting my bearings and I'm finally getting back to normal and it's like a few weeks later we're seeing each other again, you know, maybe it's every six or seven weeks because of the, the way the holidays mount up. But it becomes so hard, you know, when you have to let go. You, you've got these massive periods and then you only get a very short window together. So sometimes we only get three days together. Sometimes we get five. Sometimes we get seven. If we're lucky, we get 10. In a very rare instance, we get two weeks. That's usually the summer holidays. So it's all these little windows, and they're never, it's never consistent. You don't know how long you're going to get. There's a lot of travel. There's a lot of separation. And that's the part that I don't think people will truly understand the separated part. You know, at all costs, you should be spending time together, and I get that, and I do, and I have, always have. But it doesn't change it. It breaks my heart every time she leaves, you know. It's not a pressure on her that I put on her. I don't really talk about that. I know she feels it too when she goes, though, because she's always desperate to run back to me as soon as she can. You know, when the holidays come, I always give her the choice. If you want to just stay there and you've got, you've got any plans, you can... No, I want to come to you, you know? And it's like, I don't want to ever make her feel unloved. I don't want her to ever feel trapped in a holiday period when she wants to be with me, you know? Like, feel like... You know what I mean? Like she's not doing what she wants to do, so she'd rather be me. I don't want to not be there for her. But then, you know, she goes home to go back to school, and I think that helps focus her. It helps distract her. Then I come back to the empty home, and it's like, ah, oh, I was happy for a moment. You know, it was like I had a window of happiness, and it destroys me when I come back, and it's like, ah. Oh, shit <laughs> do you know what i mean it's like oh my god it's like before she came back i had made peace with my little piece of hell convincing myself it's a little piece of heaven <laughs> that's literally what it's like really you know you get time to, you, you create your environment to create your space your little sanctuary really but it's more a pace of healing and 
place to cope, you know. But then when they come back, it's like, now I'm alive again. Now I'm happy. This is nice. You know, we start watching movies together. I don't watch like a crazy amount of movies. I only watch it every now and again. But I started building my collection up like I've shown. But it doesn't mean I'm going to sit there all the time watching all these films because you run them out. You exhaust it all. But when she's there, we enjoy things. You know, we'll sit and watch movies. We'll watch TV shows. We'll laugh. We'll be happy. We'll play board games sometimes. You know, we do all different things together. And it's like, this is nice. And then she goes. And you think, oh, okay. What should I do? Well, that the movies aren't so fun without her. The TV shows, I don't know what to pick now. You know, there's a big lull. There's an emptiness that comes over. The house is quiet. It was thriving. It was happy. It was home. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like you just, it, it's like the light fades. And everything's just empty. It's like a void. So you know when you spend time with them, it's going to brighten your day. It's going to make you going to be happy. You know you're going to be happy. Even if you do nothing together, you're still happy. You're at peace. But you know that void's coming soon. It's inevitable. It's coming. And, and it, it's frustrating as shit because in the part of your head is thinking it's a lot easier for me to cope if I don't spend time with you. If we don't, if you, if you have a holiday, just stay with your mum. You, just, just this holiday, if you're happy. But you can't win. Because you know they're suffering, but you also know, like I know myself, the closer it gets, it weighs on me, you know. It's like that was, that was our window to spend time together. And if we're not spending it, what was the point at all? What's the, what's the point of anything? I'm quite an overthinker, so I, I do that. And I look at, the, I look at the, 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 the entire year. And as heavy as the separation is from her at times, it's like if you think about like, the year, what are the best moments of your year? What are the things you look forward to the most? Like, what's the point of life? And I'm like, it's those moments together. And it's like the question comes, then why are you not make, Why are you not embracing those moments as, as often as you like? Whenever you can, just jump into it. You know, because if you say no... Or come up with a reason you can't. Maybe there is a genuine reason you can't. When's the next time you see each other? And then by the end of the year, how many times did you see each other? And it's like, but if they were your happiest moments, why did you have so few? You had these windows. We don't get that many. And, you know, I always see her. We always do it. But I always get this feeling that it would be easier if we didn't sometimes, you know. And that's not me not caring and me not wanting. It's just I know how hard it is when she leaves. And I find it tormenting. It's like this isn't fair anymore. Like it shouldn't keep, you shouldn't have to keep going. But anyway, that's what it's like. And then I have to do all the travel. So it's a huge exhaustion on my part, knowing that by the end, I'm going to be sad again. And I know this is all about me because that's what I'm coping with. But I know she needs me, you know, and I need her. So just the closer it gets. So I've been trying to put my foot down. I'm saying I've been saying that I'm not doing all the travel anymore. Your mum does half. I'll do half. It's about time. We're eight years in nearly now. She needs to start being fair with this. But inevitably, for the eight years, it's the same thing. She won't do it. So if I don't travel, if I don't do both the travel, all of it, if I don't pick her up, bring her home, and then do the whole thing back again to return her, which is extensive. It's 200 miles round trip for each journey. So what, 200 miles to bring her to my home, 200 miles to return her. The 200 miles to get her is beautiful. I lo I've always loved that. You know, you're running to her. You're bringing her home. The 200 miles to suffer is painful. Like it's truly painful. So you drop her off. She usually gets upset. I'm usually quite strong because I have to be. Um, then when I'm driving home, it's sad. You're empty. Almost lifeless, really. Open the door at home and it's like, oh, this is shit. And I've had to do 200 mile journey for that. That was fun. That was fun. So yeah, anyway, that's my... 
that's my nightmare at the moment is you're doing shit and you just it's you're only getting these small little glimpses of paradise now it's like worth all the treasure in the world though isn't it because without those glimpses of happiness throughout the year it could be quite uh, a miserable i think you'd cope you know, for instance, I'll do my books, I'll work on creative projects, I'll hope that a romantic connection happens at some point in my lifetime. Um, <laughs> you'd hope things improve, career opportunities and things, but yeah, when she goes, it, it takes a lot. And the other thing with that is, of course, if I was in a relationship, I wouldn't want the person, because this is the other thing, people can be insecure. And sometimes I've, I've had that in my life where people, they mistake something you feel as a direct reflection of them, which then becomes a whole other nightmare. You don't, like, you can't be doing that, you know? So let's say I was in a relationship and I dropped my daughter off and then I'm not happy when I come back or I'm not as happy. If you're in a relationship, that person might think, well, what, what is this? Like, what, why can't you be happy with me? And it's like, oh, it's not about you. You know what I mean? It's like, but people inevitably do that. And it's like, I can't do this. I can't sit there trying to appease you and make you feel comfortable. You have to understand that my, my dissatisfaction isn't in our relationship or the life we're building. It's the fact that I don't have everything I want and a big part of my heart is beating elsewhere. And it's like, you can't explain that any other way when your child is continually removed from you, you know. That's hard. So like I say, if you say to someone, you might not travel this holiday, People won't understand. They just think you don't care or you're being lazy. You're not thinking of anything or anyone else but yourself. Yeah, it is about yourself. It's because you're struggling on a regular. And you're trying to find a way to find some sustainability. Some sort of habit, you know, some sort of... It's just a way to cope. Consistency helps. So. If you don't have the distraction, you can you can create, even if it's an illusion, you can still create an environment where you feel stable. You know, even if in the even if in reality you're not that happy, you convince yourself you are, or at least find ways to cope. And that's surely better than living in misery, <laughs> you know? And it's like an unknowing you don't realize you're miserable, <laughs> you know? So I think it's that ignorance of it. It makes it fine. If you don't know you're miserable and you're gracefully just getting by, I think that's fine. That's fine. Part of the healing process, you know? Um, but like I say, I'm going to be traveling yet again to spend time with her because she needs me and I need her. But I know the period comes when the separation begins yet again. Everything's unknown. You never know what period you get together, how long. So then the next one's Christmas. Well, what's happening around Christmas? And this merry-go-round goes on every single holiday. Yeah. And sometimes it's so short. It's like, this is just ridiculous to do that much travel for two or three days. And inevitably I do it. But it gets exhausting, you know. Because you're trying to find like consistency in your life. Um, you know, I've walked away from jobs in the past, not always for that reason, but sometimes it was. And it's like, I don't allow obstacles between us. So if someone says, you can't see them because we need you here for this, it's that, like, well, she needs me and she's my priority. So I'm going to her. But of course, it makes your life quite unstable sometimes. So there's so many aspects to this, you know. But the main one really is the heartbreak it, 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 you experience when they go. Unless you're on the, that, the, at that end of things, you'll never truly understand it. Never understand. I think separated parents, they get it. They've been there. They know what it's like when you say goodbye to your child, when you drop them off and you've had your happy moment. You know, I think that's what I say when people won't understand it. I think because when children get older, inevitably they're not home with you all the time anyway so there's a period where you know you wouldn't have that but it's not that it's that freedom that's what it comes down to the freedom where they can drop in and out whenever they want even if 
you didn't see them for months on end, it doesn't matter so much because there's nothing blocking them from doing so. At any moment, they could surprise you or you could surprise them. At any moment, you can see each other. When you're bound by a separation that's so rigid and regimented, you know that can't happen. So you know there's a huge period. And if you miss the next holiday, let's say she's not available the next holiday, then you wait in another period. And there's only so many windows throughout the year. That's where the problem is. Um, plus also knowing they're free. When they're older, you know they're free. So all these things, it's less on your conscience, you know. I think time would naturally just elapse, but it wouldn't feel like, you wouldn't be looking at it like these windows all the time. It would just be natural, natural time moving. So anyway, yeah, it's... It's not fair. The situation isn't fair in itself, but the burden has always been. And the real problem is the fact that this is a bit, this has been going on for years and years and years. It just like it just hammers at you, you know. That's what it is. It's like it was hard enough the first time, and bad enough the times after. But you add years of this sustained routine, and I don't think many people would be able to handle six months of it like that, or even a year. Imagine doing seven, eight years of that. That's what it is. Life's been in limbo that long. And I've been trying to elevate myself in the middle of that. Try to find some normality. But anyway, thankfully, there are good moments when we're together. I find ways to cope when we aren't. But it'd be just nice when you finally have a life that is truly fair, you know? Be nice when she's home or I have the family life I desire. And I get to live my fairy tale. And I think too many people take it for granted when they have that. But you really should cherish it, you know, because um, it doesn't always last forever. But while you have it, yeah, make the most of it and truly embrace it. Because it's absolutely it's beautiful. When you're surrounded by so much love, you know, it elevates you and makes you happy. Different sides of you come out. Um, I think when you're always in the the misery, yeah, the misery, really. You're naturally going to be defensive. You're going to be confrontational, even spiteful. Um, I have a way of balancing my ego and all aspects of my personality, so I'm not like in that space on a regular basis. And if I'm spiteful, there's a reason for the spite. It may be for educational purposes. It may be to shine a light on something. So effectively, I just go into career mode and inspiring mode. I just want to try and help people not end up in those situations effectively. It's like learn from the past and try to help other people with that knowledge. Um, in the same way, like I'm saying, the heartbreak I'm going through, try to avoid that in the future, you know, try not to get to that place. Same with my books, you know, don't use children as a weapon. If you're going through a breakup, a separation, a divorce, it's like whatever you do, do not use that child as leverage. Do not use that child to hurt the other person. You know, first of all, your children should be the priority. You shouldn't even wish that for them to suffer. And second of all, you shouldn't be taking any sort of joy of, of anybody suffering. That's incredibly narcissistic. You know, let's, you know, for whatever reason, the relationship ends. It's like there's no reason to get that dark. But, um, yeah, so I'm hoping me telling my story in some ways will help people think twice. Because there's just no need. There's no need to end like that, you know. You don't have to be best friends, and rarely are you at the end of a relate a, a separation. But it'd be nice if, at some point, you could find some peace, and respect, and common decency, for your sake and your children, you know. Um, but when you go too far, trying to destroy the other one, there's no going back, and that's what's happened in this case. I've had enough. I've tried to be fair. I've been met with resistance, accusations, all sorts of shit on a regular basis. Those bridges are burnt. They may want to make peace one day. It's like, I, I, you, I've seen your character too far. It's just, you, you, I can forgive for my own, my own sanctity, but I won't forget. I can't forget. Um, but anyway, I'd rather other, other, other parties don't get like that at the end of a situation. But anyway. 
Uh, I am absolutely crying out for peace. I am exhausted. I am exhausted. Um, yeah, I think I spent so much of my life in survival mode. But I do quite well in it. You know, a lot of the time, my, my greatest work comes from my work, my um, strongest stress. So the harder the, hard the hardships, the more resilient I get. Um, I would say that's when I create my biggest masterpieces because I cope well with it, but it still gets exhausting, you know. On the other side of it, you can create your masterpiece, and then after that, you're like, oh, I am absolutely exhausted, and I can't keep doing this. This is not healthy. So, yeah, we'll spend time together, but I'll be destroyed after. That's, that's inevitable. Unless I've focused. If I've got book projects and things, I can throw myself into it, which is probably what I will do. So we've got the time coming up soon. I think when we do spend time together, I think it's next yeah, next week, it's unlikely I'll make content unless I'm absolutely... Unless I feel like a desire and something comes over me to create this and create that. Otherwise, it'll be quiet for that period. But yeah, anyway. It's never a simple process of, oh, let's go and spend time together. It's a whole lot of shit that goes through your head to get there, believe me.